This is Jeff Tibbetts from Tibbs Forge, bringing you my very first video review. Uh, I couldn't think of a better product to start out with than the Loracatis Extra Armor Kit from The Dark Works. I couldn't say enough good things about this studio. They make armor and trim kits primarily for Chaos vehicles, but uh, just recently they've started branching out to Loyalist kits due to popular demand. I got a couple of kits myself. I've been extremely excited to give this a shot uh, and see what it looks like. I wanted to kind of show you guys what you get out of the box. Uh, I have two of them. This first one that we're looking at right now you can see is uh, basically how it comes. Uh, I took it out of the packaging just like this. You can see the uh, quality of the kit is extremely high. These lines are incredibly clean. Uh, if you take a look sighted right down there, you can see just how clean these are, right? Uh, pretty incredible stuff. You can see the only spot that I could find any warping at all was along the bottom here. Admittedly, it's extremely subtle. Uh, some pieces have slightly more than others. Uh, yeah, this one has a little bit more of a bend to it, but even even so, this is going to fit across the bottom of the Land Raider kit and you'll glue right around behind it. So you'll be able to press it flush and you can see how flexible it is. The, the top pieces are a little bit thicker and much sturdier. Um, you'll see that uh, even though I'm giving it a little bit of flex here, it pops right back into shape. Uh, there are some little gates here, but they're actually very conveniently placed to be super simple to trim off. These through the middle are just channels for resin. Uh, he adds those so he gets a nice clean uniform pour and it really works. Look at how clean these rivets are. This is professional top quality stuff. Uh, you can see a couple more pieces here where they're twin pieces. He has them joined in the middle and then these little trim gate or these little gates can just be popped right out and trimmed up. But take a look at just the quality of these kits. I cannot get over how clean they are. It really looks like it's manufactured by Games Workshop itself. They are incredible. There have been people online who've said that uh, his kits are cleaner than Forge World. And I believe it, just from what little I've seen. This piece is interesting. It shows several of the kind of one-off plates uh, that go in different places. This is for the engine and back. These are for the two doors. And then this goes across uh, the front hatch. Now you can see obviously there's some thin flashing here. Literally it just pops right out though. I have found just like a couple of tiny little air bubbles on pieces, but they're always in the back. Uh, the way he arranges his port gates and everything is, is really quite clever. The few I've seen are, are completely invisible once it's assembled. So you can see I haven't even gone through with a knife really. I just popped these out. Uh, but even so, I mean you could throw this on the model right now and it'd be fine because all of the spots where those gates were are, are all gonna be invisible once the assembly is complete. Uh, the only exceptions are say around here where the light will go. Yeah, maybe around the front here, but this would be extremely easy to just take a file to and clean up. Here you can see just a couple of tiny air bubbles there. They're actually pretty hard to even see. But right through here, you've got a couple. But again, this will be pressed right up on the hole of the Land Raider, so you won't even see it. You can see right here, he's actually added a small reinforcement strip. And that's pretty clever because on the Land Raider itself, there's a slight bevel on the spot where this goes. So this actually fills in that gap a little bit, and it gives it just a little bit more strength. This kind of uh, resin isn't particularly brittle. This piece, the little port gate, you can see it's just barely attached. Uh, so it makes it very easy to just kind of pop off. So that gives you a sense of how brittle this is. It's not very, but with a little bit of push, you can just sort of pull it off. So kind of going around the kit here, let me pull out my model and show you. So here's a Land Raider that has not been glued down yet. Uh, the interior compartment is glued, but the rest of it I just kind of threw together so I could show you this. So in order to put these on, they're made to work around the model. However, you'll notice that it doesn't quite sit down flush. The intention is that you simply take a hobby knife and trim off some of the raised uh, rivets around here. I did notice when I was going through doing a, a basic fitting, you can see that the rivets here, some of them are designed to actually work with the kit, or I should say the kit's designed to work around the existing rivets. And then you've got this piece that goes around the side. 
see how that's got this little channel here? This is designed to kind of fit right around that. And so once they're assembled, you don't see the, the inner lip here that disappears underneath this one. There's actually a front piece that covers up a little bit more of the track. Some people don't like the exposed bits of track there. This piece will fit right around the front. See how he kind of cleverly left a couple of spots here for the axles or what have you for those road wheels. And so it fills in this gap pretty well. And again, I have to trim some, but this will go around the front here and give that really heavily armored look. This piece will go around the front just like on the back. And once I trim down the rivets, it'll overlock in this front piece right here. It's really quite clever how it works. Another really nice feature I wanna show off, you'll notice that the uh, doors here, when they're cut out, uh, there's, you know, when you take out those poor gates, there's not, there's not a lot going on in the doorway here. Uh, that's, that's actually not the finished design. There's a really cool system where you actually have additional plates that go on the side here. There's a squared corner and then three that are beveled off. So you match up that squared corner right here and then you actually put that right onto the kit. Now the reason he did this is because there are two variations depending on where you want your door versus your sponson weapon. So you can either have the sponson weapon in the front or the back, depending on how you choose to assemble your kit. So when you order, there are two separate options for the side pieces. Uh, you can see I've actually got both options here. One of them has the uh, wider opening in the front and one of them is in the back. You don't have to worry about uh, the kit interfering or dictating how you choose to assemble your model. To show off some of the other pieces, you've got this piece for the front hatch. It fits right along here. And you'll notice, again, it's not sitting flush because we have the aquila here, right? The aquila and these rivets across the front. This is flat in the back. So you just have to basically file this down or slice it off. This little bit right here will gel with the side pieces and the front pieces to kind of unify that design and the look and to beef it up even further. Of course, for the doors, you have these. Uh, so the two different doors, this goes across the front plate. And then the one with the ladder, this goes on the side of it. So it doesn't obscure the ladder itself. Again, very clever design. So what I'll do is I'll trim these up and I'll come back and I'll show you uh, kind of where to start removing some of the surface details so you don't get a little overzealous. So what I'll do is I'll go through, or go through carefully and I'll kind of mark the rivets that need to be removed and I'll just go through with a hobby knife and slice them off so you can see how, how tightly this will fit down. 